What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing the past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. And this is the healing technique that we've now been teaching it well, since 2002, that's 12 years. What if you could time travel with them? Visit mythical places or angelic realms, other worlds, other galaxies. Help others to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT and now you can learn her method by going directly to DoloresCannon.com and don't forget to mention the discount code MORETALKS. Broadcasting from the UK and across the world online. You're now watching The Moore Show and I'm your host, Kevin Moore. Now for the next hour, I'll be covering subjects that will open up your mind and provide you with information you may have never heard before. Now on today's show, I'm about to be joined by my guest, Pamela Aran. Now she's well known as one of the pioneers of aura reading in the spiritual field and is widely renowned for her extrasensory ability to use the human energy field for the purpose of healing and empowering her clients around the world. She joins me today from Utah to discuss her channeling and much more. So Pamela Erilyn, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to have you on. Um, so, okay, uh, this is a bit on the seat of my pants, this interview, which is, which is just the way it should be. I didn't want to do uh, any uh, sort of revision on you as such. I'm a channeler as well. You're a channeler. The questions will come to me as they always do in my interviews. Uh, it's, it really is. Um, I, I, I've watched some of your previous uh, work. I think it's uh, really great stuff how you're very much in the moment when you're channeling and there's none of this sort of, you know, uh, going to deep depths of, you know, forgetting what's been said. You're very much in the moment, aren't you? You're very much a conscious channel. Yes. Yeah. That was I can trans channel, but I just don't prefer it. <laughs> no, no. Well, it's well, it whatever works for whoever's you know. Whenever one does the channeling, that's the main thing. Um, but no, I thought it was. Imp I, I was impressed about actually the way that that it came through for you. So lots of people have suggested that I get you on. In the end, you guys chased me down because uh, you guys had had people that wanted to uh, see you being interviewed by myself. So very grateful for the universe bringing us together. Most definitely. Um, so everyone's got a journey with your journey then um how did it all start out for you i mean what was uh, growing up like in a sense i mean uh, was it uh, a deeply spiritual kind of growing up or was it uh, religious how, how, yeah both <laughs> both wow uh, yeah absolutely both i was raised in a fundamental southern baptist family <laughs> And um, my first awakening experience was at age five and, um, you know, with an, a guardian angelic presence. And then I began to see other archangels and ascended masters. Um, and it began from there. I began an intense training period, um, both in waking and sleeping hours of my life. And it just it was like opening a giant Pandora's box. It, it, there's no off button. It just is. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, uh, what, what, even in the teenage years, then, then you were developing this ability or you, did it fade away? 
No, it was always just from age five, it was full on. You know, there was a development in terms of how to use it, but in terms of it being there, it was there full on from age five, um, nonstop, just boom, 1000%, just like that. Um, but I had to really have a lot of guidance from angelic presences and ascended masters in terms of how to operate that way. Because to answer your question about growing up this way, it was a challenge, you know, to fit into public school systems and with a religious family and you know, the need to hide it and things of that nature. <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, yeah, well, uh, well, there's a good question. I mean, hiding it. I mean, so did you, uh, who did you speak to as a, you know, uh, uh, when this was happening to you? I mean, I mean, what did, uh, what was the reaction when you did speak to people as well? Um, well, initially when it happened, you know, I was sleeping and a bright light entered my room. And it, I just assumed that my parents, you know, had turned the light on in the room because I shared a room. We grew up pretty poor and I shared a room with my parents and my brother and I were in there. And um, I just thought, well, why would someone turn on the light in the middle of the night? So I woke up and there's this massive angelic being standing in um, a white robe with a gold sash um, holding a candle like this. And he motioned for me to come forward. And um, I did you know, with great curiosity. <laughs> and he um, touched me um, on here and said, now you know, and here and said, now you see on both ears and said, now you hear, now you feel. And we went through like this um, process, you know, of opening up all the extrasensory abilities. And after each one, something interesting happened. When, when he said, now you see, um, the ceiling opened up in my room and I could see through the ether. I could see every um particle molecule <laughs> in yeah. a fully expanded version it's like walking around with some in-depth x-ray or mri vision um you you don't see solid matter there's i don't have any spatial vision it was hard growing up as a teenager because i almost wrecked several times and well i can't even say almost i did wreck several times <laughs> trying to get my special vision acclimated um trying to see solid matter when i know that solid matter isn't there and trying to imagine that it is there my brain had to acclimate um i became what's called um a synesthete so that's like extreme synesthesia my smell heightened um when I would hear sound, I would see things even more greatly. If I heard anyone talk, all of a sudden I could see their aura. You know, so everything is sound oriented for me. And then I will see and, and feel and all those other things once I hear a sound. Okay, and and um, did you feel this was just normal? Everyone had these abilities or did you feel quite isolated because you knew actually this was not the norm for people? A little bit of both because I was being told that it wasn't the norm. My guides were there, you know, um, regularly and speaking with me. Um, my parents thought that I was speaking um, to imaginary beings. <laughs> my mother's very gifted, so she kind of sensed otherwise. My father um, has a lot of Cherokee uh, blood and he's 50%. He's part um, Cherokee. So he kind of had a greater sense of things. My mother knew because she has prophetic dreams and she is a, a visionary being, but just not practiced in, in the sense. Um, so no one really tried in my immediate family. They did not try to suppress it or make me hide it around them, but they did express the nature of, okay, we're going to church now. It might not be a wise place to talk about that, you know, and, and maybe don't tell your teachers about your angels because right away from kindergarten on, the teachers were saying, look, she's daydreaming. She's looking at things that aren't there. She's talking to things that aren't there. She's running out of school um, when she says she has to go to the bathroom and then talking to beings in the stall, you know, the bathroom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's kind of how it was. And um, my, my mother was always in the principal's office, you know, trying to explain and, and she had a hard time <laughs> yeah yeah i can imagine i can imagine especially in 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 in, in the time but then you said as well that uh, your mother was tuned in in a sense and she was able to perceive this but then with the religious side there as well i mean it's almost like uh two extremes isn't it i mean how, how did that work well she had a deeper spiritual nature you know, my father did as well. So with my parents specifically, it was rather easy because they're like, look, we understand this. We, 
we sense that you're different. That's okay to be different, but no one else does. And here is, you know, the, the dilemma. So um, <clears throat> there were things like that, that we didn't really know how to, our family did not know how to explain to other people. So it was just kind of between myself and my mother and my father. And, and it wasn't talked about much. It's like, look, we know you're um, different. <laughs> mm. And, but we have to suppress this in the public eye. So, okay. Then at what age did you sort of come out and say, look, this is my truth. Um, I mean, I'm going to explore this because um, must, there must have been material that you read that opened you up as well. And we'll get into that. But w was there a pinnacle age where you said, right, I, I'm, I, want, I want to sort of, you know, get into this now? Or was there some sort of event that happened in your life to get you to that space to use these gifts that you've got now? I was always utilizing them and my guides were always putting me in the place and the time to utilize them. My mom always stated that she didn't understand why I was... Um, you know, attracted to situations that would, you know, get me in trouble. You know, I was always looking for the child in, in the in the school playground that needed me most. And I was there while well, in extreme situations, I'd end up spending the night with friends whose fathers would abuse them sexually. And then I wouldn't get touched and I would end up, you know, telling school counselors, okay, this child, you know, I was like, I was a little adult, you know, I hung out with teachers. <laughs> I had no interest really in kids unless I was helping them in some way. Um, I didn't have that much interest in play. Um, I was interested in helping and healing people in an expanded way from age five on. So I didn't have a lot of playtime or things of that right. nature. I was always deeply talking or healing someone or, or doing something. It was always there. And then around age, I want to say 22, I began to say, okay, maybe I can go deeper in terms of professionally helping people with this. Right. 22 okay so still quite young um so when you say professionally helping that would have been what giving some sort of what readings would you call them? readings readings and healings practicing this was back during the age of aol when people had like the lifestyle chat rooms i don't know if you're my age you may remember that at the beginning of the internet <laughs> i do well i've got my i shouldn't really ask how old are you if you don't mind me asking um i'm 42 Okay, I'm 38. Okay, so we're not too far Then you away. might remember that yes, when AOL yes. first started, they had chat rooms. Yes. So there was a chat room on AOL that was just for readers. Yep. And it was, you know, free psychic readings. So I went in and I'm like, well, this seems like a place where I can connect to a lot of people <laughs> and expand my abilities. And it was boom, 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 boom. You know, and, and I got really good at just kind of zoning in and operating through the Akasha and stepping through the ether because my vision um, doesn't require a person in front of me. Um, directly no no so i start <clears throat> well uh, okay books what sort of material were you reading that influenced you what sort of did any books really change your life at that age no later yes but at that age no there was nothing it was me and my guides wow and and you, you knew they were called guides i mean who gave you that word uh yeshua ben joseph and archangel michael so that so, so you, that right yeah. okay and and when you would bring these these guides through um and how 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 would that come through to you is it more of a download is it a voice is it just a knowing i mean how, how does it how do they connect um i hear their voices and then i can see them because everything starts with frequency and then it's like they're walking beside me and talking and there's no they're there in my real time in my life standing yeah. in front of me okay and <laughs> and is there any sort of practice you have to do to get into that space uh for me no it was just there from age five forward, you know, but in terms of other people, um, it is, has been expressed to me by my guides that it is a discipline. Anyone can develop it, but it is a strong discipline that you require a life dedication to it. Well, yeah. I, I, would you say, uh, after knowing a few channels and seeing the way that they connect, that every channel, every psychic, every, every well, we're all psychic, aren't we? I don't really like that word, but everyone that connects, uh, uh, even to, to offer as a service it, it, there's a unique way for everyone no no one person has the same gift as you or you as have a gift as uh, someone else do you know what I mean? it's all different isn't it absolutely and based upon if you what i notice as a teacher you know I, I do a lot of instruction with these with these type of gifts and abilities 
you have to find your innate ability. If you're clear audience, you're going to hear. If you are the majority of people who come to me who are just beginning to open up as an exorcist or luminary are um, precognizant or claircognizant. So they will get downloads, as you call them, of just kind of a knowingness. You don't see it first or hear it first. You get an innate knowingness of truth and then things come the more you work on it. So, okay, just going to books then, I mean, what sort of material has influenced you as, as you've sort of grown with your spirituality as well? Um, a lot of sacred text. Um, I love the, the Nag Hammadi. You know, I loved the Gospel of Thomas. I love uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, I started there in my journey. Um, I started with sacred texts because in some of my past lifetime experiences, that was another thing that was downloaded to me was I became aware of every single experience I've ever had all at once. And guides had to be there to get to um, sort of help me with that because it's a lot of knowledge for a five-year-old to take in. Um, but basically, what else? Opened a Channel by Sanaya Roman. Oh, great book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Living in the Light was one of the first books I read uh, by Shakti Gowan. Mm -hmm. um, I really loved chapter two because I, um, I noticed that a lot of channels are empaths. You know, I am very empathic and I noticed that a lot of channels have issues with incoming and outgoing boundaries. <laughs> so that helped a lot. Um, a very basic book called uh, Psychic Protection by William Bloom. It's very old. It's like 18 years old, but just as relevant because I learned a lot of techniques about um, cleansing and grounding and protection and very discipline oriented things. <laughs> yeah. I love A Course in Miracles. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, there, great book. Yeah, there's mm. just a lot of things that influence, a lot of books that influence, but not, I really didn't start that journey with reading until maybe 23, 24. Okay. Hi guys, my name's Kevin Moore and I'm the host of The Moore Show. Now it's my purpose, my passion, my mission to help you guys become your greatest version. Now you might be looking to find answers on love, connecting with your life's purpose, reuniting with a loved one on the other side, discovering your past lives, or just helping you make sense in finding your direction. Now, as a multi-dimensional channel, I can connect with higher aspects of yourself to help you in this present moment to become your best version and live your most empowered life. Now, you can book myself for a reading by going to tmspsychics.com forward slash Kevin, or you can get a reading from one of my many gifted team of readers. The More Show Psychics, helping you transform your present moment to the most loving and happiest it can be. Now, I also offer a full money back guarantee. So what have you got to lose? Empower your life today. So not long after sort of, you know, saying to yourself, this is my truth, this is what I'm going to go ahead with and, you know, say, you know, and make my stance as a, a reader and um, and build a platform yeah. for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you find your readings nowadays compared to your readings you did before are so different? I mean, and let me try not to put words in your mouth, but do you find that your readings nowadays that you're not telling people what their future is or what they're here to do? It's, it's a different type of reading. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because the future is so fluid and depending upon what's going on in the now, and now the present moment is the most important moment that you um, as an empowered sovereign being can capitalize upon at any given time you can um, change and, and mesh your you know meld into your future and develop it you are a divine creator so my teachings involve helping people expand their sovereignty yeah yeah the power is in the present moment now isn't it that is so true um, but the present moment now has already gone and that which we wish to attract into our life, manifest into our life, is still, as maybe Abraham Hicks would say, is in the vortex still. As other mm -hmm. channelers have said as well, it doesn't ex it's exist in the imagination. The, um, okay, w um, wow, so many questions with, with, with this. Um, okay. Uh, well, what what would you say right now is it, where where is your work going right now as well? Would you say where where are you progressing onto? Because obviously um, we're linking up your YouTube channel. It's in the description as well. And there's there's many interesting people that you've brought through recently in your channelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
and it's going to continue and make it even more interesting. Um, I'm on the path of teaching about ascension and enlightenment, um, personal sovereignty and empowerment, expanding and finding life purpose and attaching life purpose to one's innate abilities and understanding that everyone has a purpose and finding your unique purpose is it will open up your divine sovereignty in so many ways. And when you find your purpose and lose the um, sleepwalking, that's what I call when people are just kind of unconsciously walking around and not really being aware, you know, my life purpose is awareness and compassion and acceptance. So um, basically learning to love yourself and others without judgment. That's a very uh, non-dualistic stance. And then the other purpose is about opening up a wisdom to your own divine awareness, your own divine truths, which expands your sovereignty. And then you will find these gifts. These gifts will naturally blossom. So my work is heading into teaching. I've been um, providing individual and group instruction for a long time now, for a few years now. I offer classes, both um, in conference style and webinars. Um, and I, again, I would like to expand that further. Of course. And w with the challenge for you, I mean, was that a natural progression from uh, the, the way that you was bringing information? I mean, I, I guess, were you always channeling, do you think? Always channeling. Yeah. Absolutely always channeling. It's a matter of uh, getting the confidence to stand in the public eye with it because I had some extreme stage fright and anxiety over being seen. So this was kind of under, uh, you know, working individually with people, um, you know, for 17, 18 years or so. And then one day, the story is, um, a very good friend of mine said, um, I dare you to go public with this. And I said, well, who am I to channel, you know, Yeshua Ben Joseph in the public eye? <laughs> you know, this is this is not meant to go public. This is unique and one-on-one. -on -one. And she said, yeah, but I dare you. And, and I, I said, wait a minute, what? <laughs> um, I, I have a personal stance with that. If someone challenges me towards something and then it um, triggers my divine truth, I will do it. So mm -hmm. I did accept the dare um, very quickly and, and went with it. Yeah, you know, it, uh... I've been practicing channeling for a couple of years now. I've got a book coming out next year. And it, it is the fringe, isn't it? It's the fringe of spirituality. You know, I yeah. mean, you know, people like Neil Donald Walsh or other people that use creative writing, it's quite a safe space to come in from it with because, you know, kind of it's not so expressive, is it? You know, it's not so out there you know it's you you've you, there's no turning the clock back once you do this kind of work is there right, right. <laughs> and and it takes i always say you know it takes a brave soul to to want to come on stage even in the youtube platform space and and you know be you know be a public channeler um you you have got to um well you it, it soon builds you builds you doesn't it in many ways as a person you have to walk your walk with it. That's my biggest advice to channelers today here are watching us. It is a life change. It is a humbling experience. It is a commitment. Um, we are not celebrities. We're not here to be famous, even though sometimes that has to happen in order to reach um, the, a large consciousness. Um, it's, it's just a commitment. It's a discipline, and it will change your life. There's no off button. Um, it takes a lot of courage to stand forth because you don't stop once you start. There is no stopping point on it, and it just goes. No, there isn't. There is not. I mean, we, you know, we are a soul having a human experience, and you know, it's just the connecting with your soul through your higher self, and then connecting with group consciousness from that point. Maybe would you say that when you channel, you're bringing it through uh, your higher self, so your higher self is connecting with the group consciousness that you're connected to? Um, yes and no. My higher self just normally steps out of the way. You know, initially my higher self stands for to make the connection. And then with trans channeling, which is very different, at least in my perception from trancing, you know, um, trans means with, you know, T-R-A-N-S channeling means the, the being comes in and they are with you, but you're conscious of it. So basically my higher self is with that being, but the higher self then kind of stands out of the way and I'm cognizant of everything and in control of everything, but the being comes through my voice and I just kind of let it happen. There's no interpretation of it. There's no time to do that. I open my mouth and the message comes out. Yeah, for me, it's kind of strange sometimes. It's almost like yeah. I hear the, I hear the voice there, and yeah. then I just start repeating it, and then then it will come into sync. 
Yeah, it comes in a sync, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You start repeating it at first, and then it syncs with your own, and then it becomes you, and then it just goes, goes, Oh, goes, goes. you would do it the same way. Oh, right. I'm not many, yeah. people, many people doing it that way. Okay, that's cool, because yeah. everyone's got their own unique way of doing it, right? I always say yeah. it would be a bit of a boring world if we all did it the same way, right? So it's cool right. to be different, yeah? <laughs> um, but no, that's the way I, I, I've been bringing it through. And, um, you know, it doesn't label itself as much as it used to. It sort of, it just comes through, and... Um, I know Edgar Casey is part of that. I know yeah. he is, um, but it's not Edgar Casey. It, it, he calls it when he did come through. It, it's a oh god, what's the word? An aspect, an aspect yeah. of Casey. Absolutely. Yeah. And I like his perception on that because um, prior to me channeling him, my particular perception, based upon what my guides and guardians taught me, is that Source comes through aspects of your divinity, and that that's how Source projects into our consciousness. And that we are multidimensional beings. So um, one aspect of my consciousness can pull very easily with a being like Edgar Casey because we have we're just similar in our essence. Well, that's nice to know because sometimes I think, well, you know, where is this coming from? You know, th there's always that part of me, and it's it's hard sometimes, right? Where you're thinking, oh God, is it, you know, is it me just wanting to do this because this is what I, you know, some crazy part of me wants to do? But then there's so many, there's so much loving loving guidance that comes through, and I'm like, well, you know what? Even if I have lost the plot in one sense, it's very lovingly done, right? And it's such impactful information to myself personally that I, that I had to keep carrying forward with it. Do you know what I mean? And not and not get too far down that road of uh, you know the doubting Thomas. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that's a, another thing that I'd have to say to our viewers today is that um, don't doubt yourself. You know, let it just come through. You can worry about all that later if, if that's going to be the case. Just let something come through in the moment, and then you know let let your judgment aside for a bit. Yes. Do you know, uh, for some out there as well, they may be a bit nervous of putting all two feet in the spiritual realm, that some people feel that they need one feet in the earthly reality because that's what they've come here to have, this earthly experience. And others are happy then to have the other foot in the spiritual. But to me, and I'm judging you here a little bit by saying, you, I feel, because this is your path, that you've got both feet in the spiritual realm. Would you say that's true? Absolutely. Mm. It's very important, at least from my perspective and what my guides have expressed, and I've noticed um, so much emotional instability with um, beings who don't have a grounded foot in reality. And again, it is a discipline which requires meditation, proper food, um, you know, everything is frequency. So the YouTubes you're watching, the, the radio stations you're listening to, the news, absolutely a terrible frequency in my, in my perspective at least. Um, you know, politics and religion, it might be something you want to shut down for a bit, if not permanently. <laughs> um, just my perception and experience is that everything is frequency and managing your frequency to keep it um, grounded and keep a higher frequency as well um, is very important for the channel. So grounding absolutely is important. But I suppose what my question was as well. Yeah, thank you for that, by the way. Um, I, I suppose, would you say you've now committed your life to spirit in a way? Have you sort of surrendered and said, this is my I'm, I'm working for you guys now uh i'm but i might have this criteria of some things i do want right <laughs> you know if i'm going to work for you but this you know you have sort of dedicated your life to to being of service absolutely it requires a dedication and um you know i still get in my ego okay occasionally and guides will you know correct me in that but it's really really easy for us to say i want it this way or i want it that way but um you know, we have our unique individual creative perspective and expression, and guides do seem to honor that. You know, because we are human beings, um, you're going to mess up. It's okay. But overall, um, yeah, it is a commitment. It is a life of service. Hmm. You almost have to say, don't you, sometimes when you want to commit to this work, I surrender. <laughs> I just surrender. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Um, I surrender. But, I, yeah. but it always looks after you, doesn't it? It always provides for you, and it always... You know, if you, it, yeah, it it does. I mean, it, to to me, this is a still for my understanding. This reality is one that is malleable. That is, you know, you can have in this reality what you so forth desire from your heart. Yes, absolutely. And that can be any. I mean, whatever that is, as long as it's you know loving towards yourself and others. Um, yeah. Um, what, 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 where has your work taken you in the, in the sense of creating your own reality? Have you, have you come to learn more on that as you've channeled more? 
I am constantly creating my own reality. And, you know, whether passion is part of that and creativity is a part of that or fear is a part of that, it requires surrender. You know, and initially in the beginning stages of standing forth in the public eye, there was a lot of fear and that can come back as well. So I urge, you know, channels to follow caution with that, you know, expand your fear into love, face it, breathe towards it. Don't shield yourself from your fears, breathe towards your fear, not away from it, <laughs> you know, and go forward in your passion. If, if um, for example, one day I was working with a client one-on-one and um, I had some crystals in my hand and I had this habit at that time, which was wonderful, of keeping a bunch of crystals by my desk. So I just started playing with them and I felt the need to create a grid, <laughs> you know, and, and, and my guides were like, well, do it. And I felt the need to ask the client, you know, what's your intention in this reading? You know, what is your healing intention? If you could create anything today, if you could have any healing today, what would it be? You know, and I felt the need to allow that intention to go into the crystals. You know, so, so I started breathing their intention um, as a co-creation, you know, into the crystals. And then before I knew it, I had a grid. And then before I knew it, you know, it was a shamanic journey through that grid. <laughs> wow. And the shaman in me started to come out, you know, based upon my ancestral heritage. You know, and then and nowadays I create um, very, very um, intense grids for people to use in their own way um, so that they have physical, emotional and, and mental levels of healing. You know, I create grids to um, help people with abundance, you know, what they might perceive as a block. You know, so that was a level of creativity that um, I followed, like the day when I woke up and said, I'm teaching now. And, and of course, my business managers at the time said, oh, really? Well, uh, where's your class material? I'm like, in here. <laughs> Believe me, there's a lot of it. <laughs> and they're like, where's your outline? I'm like, up here. <laughs> but in the, in the grounded nature of it, I learned and I knew that I had to begin to write down outlines and, of course, material. And that happened as well. Um, and then I just followed that from a creative perspective and a grounded perspective. So I urge people to follow their notions, those, that still quiet, subtle voice that says, I want to teach. I want to work with crystals. Um, I want to chant. One day I was doing that, and before I knew it, I was chanting overtones. And then from that point on, I could hear everyone's particular source tone that was coming through their um, projection um, of their divinity. And then when I would teach people their source tones, I'm like, this is what I hear for you. This is what I hear for you. And then they began to chant it. And then the whole world began to chant source tones, yeah. you know, and that became healing for them and connected them to their own unique abilities. So I just began to follow my creative flow of what was happening. It's uh, interesting times that we're living in now, isn't it? And, mm -hmm. um, have you been bringing information about the times that we live in now as well and the, the shifts that we're going through? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the Ascension is definitely a part of my teaching. So one of my videos called the 411 on Ascension definitely uh, identifies my perspective that we are not collectively ascending. We have unique uh, individual Ascension experiences. Wow. Okay. That's the, yeah. Do you do you find that some of the your material that you bring through sometimes is um, well different compared to some of the other material out there? Would you say it's it's of a, from a different perspective, maybe with some common threads as as well? Yeah, absolutely, and I don't let that concern me at all. I don't actually follow a lot of other people's perspectives. No disrespect involved, but I find that it's best to keep a a pure. Um, uh, source of consciousness when pulling through. I don't want to have any filters or opinions. I just give the information. A lot of channels that I've interviewed would say the same thing as well. Yeah, a lot of them say the same thing that they've, you know, they started off maybe reading some Seth stuff or whatever it may be that, that was a pull to them, right? But in the end, it was like, you know what, this is my journey and uh, I've tested this connection out enough <laughs> um, and I'm just yeah. going to go with it. And you find, don't you, that actually you attract the people on the on the same soul level as yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And whoever needs to hear this material will be attracted to that and to my teachings. Yes. Yes. That's so, so true. And even from the perspective of when they get a reading with yourself as well, uh, they are, you are the right one for them in that, at that moment. This, whatever's going to come through from you is what they need to hear in that moment. They've been sent to you in a way, but, but it's all, it's all the level and frequency that they resonate with you as well. 
Absolutely. And people who are ready to hear that and ready to expand their abilities normally come to me. People who are ready to um, stand forth out of fear and find their own unique gifts, those people find me. Um, people who have had a lot of access to ascension teachings that are uh, fear-based. Um, people come to me from that perspective and say, oh my gosh, I'm terrified. There's so much out there and it's very overwhelming. And people are saying the same things, but some people are saying different things. And, and what do I do? And a sort of um, ascension fear, if you will. <laughs> ascension fear. I love that term. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we get, we get lost in other people's truth sometimes. And, uh, and I know right. some people say, well, there's only one truth. But actually, I think when you cross over, you take your truth with you. And I don't think it's forced away from you neither. And I don't think there's any book Absolutely. that's put in front of you that says, now Absolutely. you should study this book because actually all the other books were wrong. But this is the right one. I don't think it works. I, I think you're allowed to progress. I think there's probably infinite levels to go to as you cross over. Infinite. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's so much bigger than what our brains can comprehend when we are incarnated. I know. Why the hell did we come here for? <laughs> What's your take on that? Expansion. Earth is really, really unique. And um, it, it, so many people have the perspective that this is a prison planet and that we are trapped here, that there's um, an incarnated uh, rebirth cycle, if you will. And I'd say maybe 17 years ago, I did see that perspective. Now I feel that we are shifting away from it, but I'm also seeing people that are still trapped in that because they believe it. So I'm seeing a significant perspective of humans that are trapped in that incarnation cycle because they believe it's truth and they are terrified of it and then they create that. But I'm seeing just as many who get over there and they, and they leave the body and they're like, oh, this is, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. And I can, what do you mean I can choose to come back or not? Great. So earth to me um, seems to be of a novelty experience where you have to have a lot of um, spiritual evolution to be here. It's not a trap. It's not, um, it's, it's a really divine place where you learn in a unique way mm. that involves a lot of evolution. And um, you have to be an evolved soul to be here. It's not spiritual boot camp. Um, it is a privilege you expand in such a way that when you leave this existence um there are ultimately many wonderful rewards yeah i mean you can see the addictions of wanting to come back but then yes. again yeah but then again you know some people some souls have such difficult incarnations here such painful ones i'm also yes. sure they do not want to come back even though they may see the bigger picture when they cross over and they see that actually you know okay we could have come you know maybe they that there is options to come back but you know they're just not ready um mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I i suppose you get to interview i mean when you channel some of the names that you've been channeling recently on your channel um are you have you pre-chosen to do to 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 bring those um aspects through or are they just aspects coming through because they've just turned up to want to come through or is it a bit of both it's a bit of both Hmm. Um, I do sit down every year and kind of think about, and I invite oh, beings <laughs> and I make cool. a big list. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. And I sit down and I'm like, Oh, can I connect with this one? I'm re always been curious about that one. And some of it's curiosity based upon what people are, um, what collectively ready to hear. Yeah. Um, and some of it's like, you're not ready to hear this, but should I bring it through anyway? <laughs> yeah. So I kind of, sit down with my guides and I go, okay, you know, who wants to come through this year? And I make a big list, but then it changes. Sometimes like, for instance, I recently wanted to channel in Confucius. That was due this weekend, you know, and I've been working with Confucius and I'm like, I don't think society's ready for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I put that on hold for a bit with Edgar Casey, It took over a year for me to be ready because wow. the stuff he was telling me, he was teaching me, he's such a profound being. And I'm like, what? Oh, that's great. Give me more, you know, and then I'll connect with him more. And I'm like, I don't really understand what you're saying. Um, there's two different aspects of him that seemed to come through. And one was his waking conscious aspect of Edgar Casey the man. And then there was Edgar Casey the prophet. And when Edgar Casey the prophet spoke to me, it was in this unique uh, inflection and tone he speaks so uniquely, unlike any being on the planet. And I'm like, excuse me, but English, please. What are you saying? What do you mean thee and thou and shall and what's this, you know? <laughs> so it took he and I a while to connect. 
Yes, I mean, it, it was a very oldy type of English he used to speak, wasn't it? Um, yeah. it, it sometimes. And, 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 and you look at his, if you go to the ARE website and look at his quotes, uh, that they quote his, 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 re, you know, his readings, uh, they're, they're, they're almost, un, not, they're, they're not easy to understand. It's almost like he's put it in a, in an enigma for you to for you to not see him as someone just to be you know to be holden upon that you do the work yourself to decode it so that you take some self responsibility in getting the message i don't know it's not yeah. straightforward for a reason yes. and but, it took some time for me to understand that the, the yeah. teachings you know because i didn't read anything you know i only recently joined are like after <laughs> yes, yes, yes. the channeling and um I, I really wasn't familiar um a client gave me a book called the river and i read maybe one chapter of it <laughs> and he was like stop you really don't need it anymore <laughs> so uh I, I have uh edgar casey on the revelation sitting over here on my desk and i haven't read it yet mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. these things happen Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's a bit of both to answer your question. I tried to bring in Dolores Cannon and she goes, oh, you know, I don't really speak to channels. And I'm like, oh, really? And she goes, well, yeah, that's what my community would say. And I'm not ready to speak with you yet. So and it took an entire, I don't know, six or seven months before she would speak with me. Mm -hmm. So I respect the being that put, is pulled through. Um, and Tesla, oh my goodness, I'm not a mathematical person. That took some time. <laughs> right. Right, Tesla. Oh my God. Do you ever get scared yeah. that what's coming through, you know, you're not going to understand because it's beyond your level of understanding? Yeah, absolutely. That's why I prepare for several months and I'm like, what do you really want to bring through and why? And um, tell me just so that I can not sound like an idiot and kind of understand what's coming through. <laughs> so Tesla took maybe three months and he woke me up at 3 a.m., 3.33 a.m. for three months straight teaching me about sacred shapes and um, working with the tetrahedron specifically, uh, talking about fractals and teaching me math so that I would understand what he was saying, you know, because I, I'm, I'm not educated in that way. I have a bit of a, maybe a high schooler's education with um, geometry and, and calculus and algebra. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I would probably be too scared to bring something like that through because I, would, I, I, I would block it. Uh, yeah, ma math. Oh God, discalculate, dis, dis everything, right? Um, um, <laughs> passing with flying colours as well. I want to say that, but um, yeah, yeah. And and I realised in the end that you know what, I'm not supposed to bring that kind of stuff through. Mine's more of the nature of where we go to and 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 bringing in healing information. So hats yeah. off to you for doing that, right? Um, <laughs> really, I mean that. That's not easy. Thank you. Um, and then some people that channel because I know a lot of them. Um, well, it's different. It's very much, they don't, it's unnameless. They don't name the name of that which they're bringing through. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and that's beautiful. That could be very beautiful as well. Um, again, every channel relates to different people on different levels. The level that you are at will be the level of frequency of the people that you bring to you. That's the thing. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, and I think channeling has, you know, it's just a word. I mean, do you like the word channeling? I am uh, ambivalent. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Words are words. Could, could you, could you personify that word for anything else that may, may fit you better? Oh yeah. Well, um, it doesn't really fit me or, or not fit me. It's the word mm. that people use. And right. I follow the words that people use because they relate to them. Yeah. Um, I am more of, um, I guess I could say I'm a channel, but when I, when we think about channeling, I'm, I mean, I'm, I love, I love to chant. So I channel, I'm chanting from native American ancestors and I love to do that publicly. You know, and when I begin a workshop, normally it'll begin with a synchronized meditation that involves chanting. That's channeling. I love to paint. You know, I produce frequency paintings individually oh, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, for my clients. Um, although I don't have a lot of time to do it these days, um, I love it. Um, I love to exercise. That's channeling because when I'm emotional, emotion comes through my body, and if I don't exercise, I feel it. Um, I, I just channeling Same is here. everything. Mm. Good, good, good. Yeah, you know, there's been parts of me that wished it was for me, right? But it seems to be my path is a little bit different. There's almost that business aspect that wants to come through, you know, that, that I've got to do as well. There's just other things. And I think to myself, am I denying my channeling if, if anyone else is going through the same thing as me? I don't know. I mean, you just, you, you know what? I just try to do the things that I enjoy doing. Yes. 
That is excellent advice. Excellent advice, because when you follow your true divine nature, you're going to be following exactly that. And when you follow your passion, that ignites such a resonance in you that um, will pull towards you. The law of attraction will work for you and the universe is conspiring for you at that point versus just sleepwalking or being afraid when you feel that the universe is conspiring against you. Um, channeling can be a beautiful thing that ignites such the law of attraction to work at a really, really beautiful reference point for you. I guess really I'm thinking to myself, actually, Kev, what are you talking about? You're doing a channeling documentary this year. You're making the, the, the sequel to Tuning In. Mm -hmm. You're doing the movie Tuning In Now. So yes. um, maybe, you know, my, my thing is to, you know, to, to, to bring it more in the media than just to Absolutely. be a, a public channel all the time. Yeah, and yeah. That's important. Someone yeah. needs to do that. You know, kudos to you. I commend you for, for having that, um, put, putting that out there because someone needs to do that as well. Yes, that yes, and I've met some wonderful people on this journey. You know, I met this chap yesterday that's uh, going to, you know, that that's looking to be the potential editor for the documentary, and he said to me, you know, I've only just come out as being a channeler, and he said uh, the 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 entities I connect to, they actually they actually in their race they used media in the end as a way to raise their consciousness and they've connected with him because he's using media to raise, you know, to help raise consciousness. I was like, oh my God, that's just, that's amazing. <laughs> you couldn't make that yeah. up if you tried, you know what I mean? Wow, that's what you, you, I mean, he gave me the name of the race, but I mean, I can't remember. So many people, I think we all channel in different ways, don't we? Different in, in, in some of the aspects of what we do, like a car mechanic might be ch channeling the car, do you know what I mean? When he's trying to fix it, <laughs> the doctor. <Yeah. laughs> Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Surgeons particularly are really, really good. And you'll see them under the knife, you know, <clears throat> just kind of, I, I've um, astrally projected into my own surgery once. That was really fun. Wow. And I saw <laughs> myself losing blood. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, and, and I was kind of whispering in the doctor's ear, like, follow your intuition. I have a bit of a genetic condition. You need different, you need some, something going on. You need more blood. <laughs> you know, don't use that cold knife because my blood cells don't respond well to cold. <laughs> wow. So I'm just like whispering to him and um, things are going poorly. And then he went, has anyone looked at her chart? There's something that's, she's bleeding a bit much. And, you know, and I felt like I, I may have saved my own life there because he looked at the chart right away. Wow. You know, and he, he, he just stopped and he goes, look at the chart now. And, and he was like, oh, oh, that's that one, that cold a gluten disease, that, um, that you can't use. Why wasn't these instruments warmed up? So then they did that and I had, I got some blood and the surgery went well. Damn. Okay. That's incredible. That's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a cool story. <laughs> that's a really cool story. Okay. Uh, I mean, I suppose that you know when you, we we talk about these things, right? We're we're talking about a nature of reality that we we don't really understand, do we? We we're using a lot of human words in this interview, right? Yet you know the true nature of what it's all about. Um, I don't. It's just impossible. I don't. I think. I think even with the best channeling you could do, you that answer would would, would maybe not be there in our in our understanding as it is now. Exactly. Yeah. There's no way. To divine word on it it's all human reference points and it'll be well explained when we leave the physical form i'm sure <laughs> well you know let's not forget how important it is to be here now as well you know I, I try with these interviews you know to always bring it back to that because we know we know we can get so lost can't we in where we're going where we've come from you know i'm, I'm all about bringing inf information through from that realm to make this present moment better but let's not forget we chose to be here having a human experience. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And that's definitely a part of my teachings because um, this term that I've, I've coined as uh, ascension addiction, <laughs> which is when basically your entire life is wrapped around enlightenment to the extent that you really don't enjoy now. You're like, oh, no, I need to go meditate. And it's a bit of a spiritual bypass. So I caution um you know, beings to, to keep in mind that you are here to be in a body, you are here for the sensor experience. And it is your free will choice about whether to trans transmute pain into actual suffering. So be aware of what's going on, presence for your emotions, presence for your experience. One of the books that really helped me with this was The Presence Process by Michael Brown. Um, and he wrote so much about how to be present for yourself in such a conscious way all the time that has really changed my life as a channel. 
Right. Okay. Yeah. And right. I only read two chapters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but still, the, maybe that's what, uh, well. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's what you needed to read right now, right? Just that, just that yeah. bit of information. Um, yeah. Okay. So I know that you're probably working where you are working on a book. That's something that you're working yes. on. Yeah. yeah. I think that's going to bring you to a whole new level. I think that will. Yeah. Um, I think that's meant to be. And I think it's going to be very interesting what's going to be in that book. And I, you know, I, I will definitely get you back on for the book, for sure. Um, oh, gosh, man. You know, what is what is the most important thing right now for us to hear, do you think? If, if, if this, you know, for all your clients that you're reading for, for, for all the challenges that you're doing, what, what's, what is important that we need to know right now, do you think? Human connection. Hands down, in my perspective, connect with each other. We have these wonderful technologies that bring us together. We have social media and, and Facebook groups. You know, I think we have 24,000 in my community right now on Facebook, and we're always there and connecting. Um, and, and I urge you to follow your hearts with connecting to each other, but bring it more into reality. You know, it's still the bread and butter is the handshake and the hug. So bring it down to a human level, get together. Sometimes put down your phones and your TVs and your, you know, the internet and just go connect, just go, go meet up at conferences and hug each other and share your experiences and just connect, connect from here. Thank you for that. And that, that's probably what you're going to do a bit more of as well, I would have thought, would be the conference work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I have yeah. been. We have one coming up in August. It's called uh, Camp I Am Love. So it has a website at campiamlove.com. Okay. And it's all about connection. Oh, that's beautiful. Actually, what is your main website as well, please? Orbeater.com. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, and that's where people can get into all the classes, which we offer channeling classes. Akashic Records are coming up. Medical mediumship. Uh, the All Seeing Eye about how to open up this is coming up. We have a lot coming up this year for classes. Would you say that by uh, attending some of these classes, um, when people feel drawn to do so, that actually what you're doing, you're getting back in contact with your soul. And your soul which speaks to you all the time, whether it's through channeling, whether it's through gut feeling, whether it's through intuitive knowing, whatever it may be, it's your soul which is you i'm not trying to separate it right but it's it's that always knowing loving part of you that just knows what's right for you in this present moment and when we go against it that's when it goes wrong right absolutely absolutely and it's a still small voice when you're waking up so many people come to me and they say wow you know i don't see things like you i don't hear things like you so what how do i know that i even have a gift by listening and hearing your heart you know by listening what comes through first trust 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 some more yeah and you know the more you trust that the more you start speaking back to your soul and then eventually i'm telling you it comes through in different ways it's almost it like you've got to put your imagination head on more than your mental yes. head because in, absolutely yeah because in the imagination we i think we forget how po more powerful the imagination is than the actual okay. yeah right so that even when i channel i i had to cross a bridge of imagination in the end but when I did, I realized it was always there all the time. <laughs> I'd always been there. I'd called it my imagination when it was speaking to me in the first place. Absolutely. And this is another thing that I state. When you are um, beginning your awakening journey with getting in touch with your gifts and how Source speaks through you, connecting to your divinity, um, you have a unique way. And a lot of times it'll come through your own filters, through your own personalities, your own thoughts and words. And some people, this is the hardest thing. So many people come to me and this is a common thing that people say, I am making it up. Okay. You are source. Making means creation. It up, up, source. <laughs> so uh, you are creating and everything that you could possibly conjure in your mind is going to initially come through your filters. And until you get used to that, um, it, it's not going to come more. So please stop halting your progress by saying, oh, I'm making it up as if that's a bad thing. <laughs> but then you think about it, though. Everything that's around you and me right now was all made in thought, first of all. The chair, right. you know, the pot plant, you know, the door, the, the handle, <laughs> everything, right? The, the picture frame. It all came from thought. So... That, that as I started off at the beginning of this conversation saying that actually how powerful thought is with the law of attraction, that actually what's in your reality is not as powerful, even though it's there, what's in your thought of what you want is more powerful. But that's just my Absolutely. take. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah. Absolutely. I can, I concur. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I could ask you loads more questions and, you know, um, it's, it's been a beautiful experience with you. I will just end on this that I think that actually, and I'm, I'll just get your take on this as well. How important is love in everything that we've spoken about as well? How, how high does love come on the scale in anything that we do? Oh, 1000%. I can't even put a statistic on that. It's um, self-love um, and compassion, uh, losing judgment, losing fear, love and um, compassion will supersede judgment and fear at all times, the more you practice it. And then the less judgment and fear you have towards yourself and society, the more these gifts are going to open up. So love is immensely important. Absolutely. Well, look, just thank you so, so much for sharing that message with us. And who knows, right? Our paths may cross. Our paths may cross. So I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, I think they may do, actually. Yeah. They, they, yeah. All right. Well, look, uh, I just want to say, Pamela, thank you so, so much for joining us today. It's been a complete pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much, Kevin Moore. It is so amazing to be here. And um, thank you for having me. I'm in deep gratitude. I love your work. I love the messages that you're putting out there. You know, I had some time to really follow you for a while once all of my clients kept saying, you need to check this guy out. And I did. And I love what you're putting out there. So thank you for being such powerful presence to reach the massive human collectives that need to hear what you are um, discerning and, and interpreting and putting out there. I love what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Well, we've come to an end on today's show. Don't forget that you can listen and watch all our past interviews on the More Shows official YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new daily shows. Now, you may also find out more on all past and upcoming guests by going to themoreshow.com. And do like us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates. So until next time, be safe. Amundsen, and I offer private channeled readings to help you to connect with your soul and your divine purpose. You see, it's so beautiful because what I'm offering is to help you to step into your empowerment and your inner teacher, your inner divinity. And this is such a beautiful experience because it's coming home to your true self. It's unveiling what already is you. And in this place, you can live in guidance, you can live in freedom, you can live in your authenticity. So if this calls to you, you can book a rating with me at morechoice.com forward slash Courtney. So thank you so much, and I hope that you join me soon.